episode 13 of Chalk Talk at Chalk It Up Strength, and we are switching subjects for a second and taking a break from training as a skill, and we're going to talk about the stories of the members of Chalk It Up and members who, who, are, who are powerlifters and they balance powerlifting in the scheme of, of their larger life so that powerlifting isn't the only thing that they do, and we don't normally talk about that. We kind of... Like whatever, whatever your life is outside of the gym, you sort of leave it at the door and you come in and you're a lifter, but we really can't escape from the fact that like powerlifting represents this part of our life, but it's not our whole life, or, or for most of us it shouldn't be our whole life. And there are these unique trials and tribulations and skills that we have to develop in balancing training with what we do outside of the gym, or in Rob's case, uh, balancing uh, training for powerlifting with owning a powerlifting gym, and a gym that, that caters to uh, strength training. Zach's still here. Just pretend he's right here. Mm -hmm. He'll be back next episode. So, so we're gonna shift, and we're gonna get a little more personal on this one, I guess, and ask yeah. some questions and find some things out, and it'll be a little less informative and a little more uh, talking about personal stuff. And and the hope is that for for those who who are, who are training for powerlifting, who are also, for example, gym owners or or coaches and they're trying to balance owning a gym and running a gym with training for powerlifting. Here are like the stories from people who, who experience that and live that on a regular basis and who face the challenges that, that come with pairing those two things and the strategies that they've developed to overcome them. And that, that ought to be the practical takeaway of, of these more personal stories. And, and also just acknowledging that there are other people out there who who sort of have your circumstances, who are able to train, and and they may thrive, they may struggle, but it's like they're still coming in and they're doing it, and they have these strategies in place. Or, or and if they don't have those strategies in place, they're they're striving toward those strategies, and this can be a way for us to connect with one another and and learn from those who are in similar situations to us. So you're gonna find out some cool stuff you didn't know, probably. Mm -hmm. We're gonna ask some questions and find out some answers and talk about. How hard it is to balance certain things but we we you know make it work mm -hmm. and balancing life and lifting and business and all kinds of fun stuff and then we're going to take these and we're going to ask coaches and members of the gym and other people how they do it in their lives so i mean hopefully we'll fit all the you know all the niches out there and you guys can relate to these things mm -hmm. so what do we want to start with so we're, we're first going to ask rob what do you do in your own words Nothing. I'm <laughs> sit around. And that's it. That's and uh, episode close. No. Um, so right now, currently. Uh, what do you do for work? Gym owner, runner, help manage this place, all of the above. Um, so I do this. And then on top of that, I still, um, I still run security at a nightclub on the weekends. So that takes a bit of my time and keeps me up kind of late. But as you know, if you live in. Sonoma County or California in general, it is hard to pay bills if you don't make <laughs> two incomes or a lot of money. So I try to balance both of those things um, for work. Other than work, I try to balance that with a life, a social life, a, a dog, um, playing rugby, trying to compete in powerlifting and being mediocre at it. <laughs> um, Amongst many other things that I'm sure all of you guys try to balance your lives with as well. This is a one of my uh, most favorite hobbies. It's very, very high on the list for me, but it's not the only thing I do. So how, how long have you been a gym owner? I think we're right past two years right now. Right past two years? Yes, and it's going phenomenal. Yeah. Better than you expected? Way better than I expected. It's been a lot of fun. What were your initial expectations in, in opening the gym? Were you like, you know what, I'm just never going to train again for the rest of my life? When I first opened it, I was like, oh, I'm going to own a gym and live in the gym and work out yeah. 22 hours a day, and I'm going to be so jacked. And then I opened the gym, and then I didn't work out for like three months straight because I was trying <laughs> to make the gym work. <laughs> Might have been four or five months trying to do like construction and fix things and, and understand how things work and get members in here and like, yeah, I didn't, I might have not worked out for like five months straight. Yeah, so many gym owners, they, they think, or like gym owners to be, they think, oh yeah, I love working out. I love working out with my buddies. 
and I have a bunch of equipment in my gym, I may as well just make it a thing where I can charge money for it, right? Yes, and then you do that and you open and you train all the time and that is a false expectation. Yes, you get time to train, absolutely, but there's a million other things with coming when you, when you open that door and use the key and you unlock it and now it's like you're responsible for many, many more things besides just your training. So I would say that's, uh, that, that balance is challenging. So, so getting, or before powerlifting, what is what was your background so we can think? What was your training background before powerlifting, be it in sport or in the weight room or any of that? So like sport background, I prob- I got lucky enough that my mom put me in like almost every sport when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. And I attribute that to being more of a, like a bigger guy but still athletic and can still move is that I, I got a chance to play every single sport. I think I played basketball, baseball, uh, Looking at my nice physique, I played soccer for eight years. You're welcome. <laughs> Speedy out there. Actually, I wasn't that fast. Um, soccer, I mean, I pretty much played all the sports out there. And then in high school, I did the typical, like, four years of football. Mm-hmm. My last year there, I played rugby. That stuck with me. I'm working on, like, uh, eight or nine years of rugby now. So I have an extensive sport background in, like, multiple different sports, mm-hmm. which I think attributes a lot to um, – being more athletic as still being a bigger guy like I can still move around. You're, you're really athletic and your conditioning is probably in the top one percent of the gym. It's not bad for a 300 plus pound uh, chubby guy. Yeah you you get less winded than I do. <laughs> I get more winded in my warm-up than you do in your whole workout. <laughs> so I think that's a big contributing factor uh, and that was all before I even started powerlifting and then right at the end of that I started throwing in some bro lifting like Go to the gym, do some bench, do some arms, run on the treadmill, kind of thing. What prompted the the bro lifting? Uh, it was just like I come from being a lot like super overweight in high school, and so once I lost a lot of weight, I lost a lot of uh, strength with that because I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna read these magazines. Eat like gonna, a bunny. I'm gonna it. eat salad and I'm gonna run on the treadmill five to seven miles a day or trash bags and then wear trash bags in the sauna jogging place and then i lost 110 pounds in seven months and i probably couldn't do a push-up mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was terrible mm-hmm. and then i got into more strength training after that and that's where like the bro lifting came in the like five three one method everybody on earth has started out with that if you've done any sort of strength training at mm-hmm. all um like bench every day shoulders every day <laughs> that kind of thing and that and that kind of prompted the like in general just lifting stuff okay and then what eventually got you into powerlifting itself? So then I started doing more strength training and more learning of stuff and things like that and like doing more research on things, blah, 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 blah. So like um, five through one, small off. Five through one, some small off stuff. Some other stuff I can't pronounce that I saw totally worked, super training. Uh, some, <laughs> something over there, all kinds of crap. Um, and then I, uh, I met a guy named Carlos. And if you go to this gym, you probably heard me talk about him. Um, but he was like my mentor for powerlifting. He pretty much got me into powerlifting. Um, and I got, I can't even, I got really fortunate meeting him and starting off on a good foot and like form was a big thing. Mindset was a huge thing. How mental powerlifting is just as physical, um, and things like that. And that really shaped my like powerlifting side. Um, and then. I just started strength training from then on with him. And what, what are the highlights of your powerlifting career so far? Oh, meeting the people I've met. As, as silly and as like cliche as that sounds, it's been more about the journey than like, I got these fucking sweet medals, dude, that I think someone spent $2 to make. <laughs> but it's cool to get a medal and hang on your wall somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, the journey's been really fun, dude. The, the community around powerlifting is insane. It doesn't matter if you guys are in the same weight class and you're lifting, they're still cheering you on even though you might beat that guy or he might beat you. Yeah. And so that has probably been the most rewarding thing um, by far. Just the people I've met, that's, that's how I met you, that's how I met uh, Wilmer, that's how I met so many people. Those nightmare muscle guys, mm-hmm. okay, Jesus. <laughs> don't, even, don't even get me started on that story. I put a sticker on my water bottle, now I can't get rid of those assholes. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, Is there one particular story or experience that stands out among the rest? Um, for powerlifting? Yeah. I mean, I gotta say, meeting Ray was stand out the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Meeting him and then talking to him 
at one of the meets and then him saying that I was going to get the number I was going for. Yeah. And then he's standing there watching me. So I'm like, well, shit, I can't not get this number. This guy's right here. <laughs> it's the best squad in the world. He's right here. So meeting him was by far, uh, hands down, probably the coolest thing so far. And then being able to have a talk with him, have him come to the gym that I own and do a seminar and all these things and then like hang out with him and go get dinner with him. And eat barbecue with him. And eat barbecue with him. Like opening a gym, I never thought that I would be hanging out with one of the strongest dudes in the world just like chit-chatting on a on a two-day thing and like eating with him and hanging out. That was freaking amazing. Just talking about how much you love the gym together. Yes. That was was crazy. That was just amazing. (laughs) Between that, the people I've met and then just being able to kind of... um, be a step in the ladder for people that are on the same journey. It's like be be a little help that I can be for that person to get a little bit stronger, whether it be members here, other places, people I've helped out at meets, warm up, and anything like that. Being that for those people is awesome. And then, you know, working on getting strong myself. Because most people, they, they when you when you encounter people who, who are in powerlifting, like most of them don't have a Carlos. No. They have like the anti Carlos. Where mm-hmm. It's like, we're going to sit back and we're going to max out every day. We're going to get our backs really tight and I don't know, but my neck is always hurting. <laughs> and, and like you, you, you are, you are paying it forward. You are being that Carlos for so many lifters out there. Yeah. And all, and like all the lifters in your gym. Yeah. I can't, um, I can't explain enough how lucky I am to have him come along and then following that open the gym and then have you come along and like you've taught me a lot of stuff along the way as well. And I think we balance each other out because, like, I teach you all the stuff that Carlos taught me, and you teach me all the stuff I had no idea about. And then it's like this cool little balance, and that's uh, be. And then us taking our stuff and helping other people with it has been just such a fun thing, man. So that would be standout stuff would be those things. For sure. That was the cheesiest answer. Wasn't that just of lame? This as shit? entire series. Uh, it can't too, be tough. I'll put my put my sticky note away. It was like, <laughs> okay. Now we'll transition into the next question without any sort of segue. What were the most, or what are the most difficult challenges you face on a day-to-day basis in balancing being a gym owner and being a, a powerlifter who, who trains and competes? Oh, dude, it is challenging. Where to even start with that question? Um, how about time? how about time? How about the thing that all of us fear the most? Time, yeah. um, lack of sleep. Like I, I just cannot get eight hours. Like everybody preaches is the best thing for your strength and muscle building and I just can't do it I'm too busy with everything going on some mornings I'm working till three in the morning some morning or some yeah some morning some nights I'm leaving here at 11 15 11 30 uh going to bed at 12 30 once I get home and get all settled and feed the dog and do all the stuff I need to do back up at 5 a.m in the morning so time is probably one of the hardest things balancing that has been very challenging um and then you Bouncing that with trying to actually get stronger and like compete in a meet coming up 12 weeks away yeah. and try and get as much sleep as I can for that meet and eat right and train. Those have been the biggest things. Time has been very, very challenging. Um, and it goes by a lot faster than you think. So what what things have you been doing to, to sort of make that balancing of time and like getting your training in? So I, the gym and the people in it come first and my training is second to that. So like I will come in and I, I tend to do my training in the mornings because if the clock reaches about two o'clock and I haven't started yet, I'm just too tired to do anything. <laughs> so I try to do my training in the mornings. That's been working out pretty well. Um, I'm surrounded by a ton of good people. So training with a good atmosphere is awesome. I come into it with a good mindset, even though I got five hours of sleep the night before. I'm. I'm pretty much acclimated to that, as bad as it sounds. I've been doing it for two years, getting yeah. you know sub seven hours sleep and being able to train pretty well and still getting stronger off of it. Um, I just do my best to rest when I need rest, and and I don't encourage people to do that. It's not something that's going to be optimal for you, but it's just something that fits my life right now, so I have to do it. Yeah. So doing my best to get my training in and get my stuff done. The problem with that comes, I'll be in the middle of a top set, and I'll have you know like five sets of five to do and I'll be on the third set getting ready to do it and someone will walk in the door and now I have to stop for 25 minutes and show them the gym and talk to them and, and um, talk to them about a membership, hopefully sign them up, things like that, show them around, see if the gym is what they're looking for. That takes a good half hour, sometimes 20 minutes. Well, now I gotta 
I just had a half an hour break until my next set. So it's a little hard to come back warm mm -hmm. from that and try and like get psyched up to do another set of five or whatever I got to do that day. Yeah. So that part is super challenging, but that's where I have to tell myself like the gym and the people in it come first before my training does. So I just come back to it and I do a little, a few warm ups and then I get right back to it. And that has been a pretty, pretty high challenging thing for me is doing, doing that. And that's why when we film all these in the podcast and stuff, you always see me looking this way. I'm, I have to check on the gym all the time or I see people come in, I say hi to them. So I'm always like doing that. Um, so that balance with my training has been pretty hard. And then on top of that, like I don't have much time to cook. So I cook the minute I get time, I try and cook as much food as I can. So I got food here and I try and eat the best I can. And that's also challenging. I probably consume more caffeine than any one person should. Mm -hmm. Don't do that, it's bad for you. Um, disclaimer. <laughs> How many bangs do you uh, Too many bangs a day. We're not going to say the number. Yeah, I can't say the number. <laughs> it's an undisclosed amount. Um, but, you know, for me, that's how my life is going to gonna work right now. Um, that's not something I want to balance for five or ten years, but that's something for right now, that's what I need to be doing, so I'm doing it. And and something you've mentioned before is that, like, in, in the first year or two of owning the gym, it's like you need to be at the front desk. Mm -hmm. It's like we need to, or you need to establish that you are the face of Chalk It Up, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And and like trusting that the process of owning a gym and and having your business grow will happen in phases. Mm -hmm. And that like like you said, like you won't have to be sleep deprived and like always be like worried about your time like this. In a, like until the end of time of yes. owning the gym like there will eventually be a time where like, the amount of members you have is such that you can you can have someone who can sell memberships for you and then you can block out time to train and not have to worry about that absolutely and that time that time will come as any other business owner watching this knows that time will come but i don't want to rush that at all yeah. and and uh try and go too fast or too slow with it so that time will come where i have you know i have employees that'll come in and do things and things like that and i can pay them a good amount for being here and things like that that's just not at that time yet so yeah. today when we film this at this date that's where we're at um hopefully down the road that will change but just for now that's as good as the training will will have to be yeah. and it's it's been pretty i mean it's, it's been still growing mm -hmm. And then I took a saw a break for rugby season. Then I came back and we're back to like normal training. Yeah. Um, but it was progressing pretty well, even though I had these factors in there that were kind of, uh, you know, making it a slower process. But I accepted that. And I know it's not going to happen overnight with the amount of sleep and eating I'm getting and things like that. So that's just kind of something you accept. So one of the things that really stood out to me was the prioritization of the gym over the training. The gym and the members over training. And was there ever a time where like the training... Was, was a higher priority than gym or the members? That time existed before I unlocked the door of the gym. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, like when I was training at 24 and all those kind of gyms, um, it was like all about training, like, don't talk to me, I gotta get these numbers done. Yeah. And then once that had become, uh, like I unlocked the doors, it was more about that. Because if those don't stay open, there's no place to train. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, that's a big thing too. Um, so it's always just been about that, and I accepted that, you know, and then I signed on the dotted line. I accepted that I was going to lose a little bit of sleep and that my training might be on the back burner for a few years um, due to those kind of factors. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll get into this in, in future episodes, but we can, we can sort of generalize that as, like, as you're training and as you get older and you, you get more responsibilities. And when you're younger, and all you you're thinking about is just like work, and you say you're not a business owner, and and you're training. You could like you can devote all your attention to that. But as you have your own business, as you have kids, for example, as you as you just get more responsibilities, your attention is is diverted, and and you have less to devote to the powerlifting. Absolutely. And, and as long as even though it's not the highest pri priority, it can remain a priority. Absolutely. In in like say a, in top five or something. Always. Then. Like we can continue keeping powerlifting in. Yes, it's not something that you have to start a business and throw out. Like, oh, don't got time for that anymore. Or, you know, maybe have a kid and, and throw it out. It's not something I don't have time for. I know a lot of the dudes in here have kids and they make it work. Yeah. So it's not impossible. You're seeing people around you do it. Um, you're seeing people around you own businesses and do it. You're seeing people work, around you work full-blown construction jobs and be really tired and then get off work and still be able to train. At 10 p.m. At like 10 p.m. at night. You have to be up at 5 a.m. Yeah. 
So these things are possible. It's just where it falls on that priority list for you and the perceived value you have in it. And then like having the, the knowledge of, okay, I'm, I have 30 minutes to train. What am I going to do? How am I going to dose this well? Knowing, well, I'm going to, I'm going to wake up in four hours. Yes. Yes. Okay. So in, in this whole process up until now, what have been the most rewarding things you've experienced in balancing owning a gym and training for powerlifting? Most rewarding things. First thing being having a place like this where people can train. It's, 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 it's that simple. It's that simple. Yeah. It is that simple. Watching people come in here. The, oh man. Why is that so rewarding to you? Because there's so many walks of life have come through these doors and we're only two years in and so many different styles of people have walked through and like they found a place where they're comfortable to train. Whether that be people who have never moved a barbell before and they're like small little 100 pound kids and they don't really know what to do and all of a sudden these like guys who squat 600 pounds are talking to them and helping them out. Or girls who have been creeped out by every single dude at 24 or every single old guy or whatever it is. Sorry 24, just commercial gyms in general. Everybody's a little sensitive these days. Um, but we have a, a place here where they can come in and feel comfortable and train and not worry about that and just yeah. do whatever they want to do for the day. Like having this environment where these people can come in from so many different places due to lift a ton of weight, due to lift no weight. People who only Olympic lift and don't even power lift. Oh, that what? They train to chalk it up. You gotta yeah. be a power lifter there. People who are rowers, no. people who, people who, who different are rowers. Sports. We got competitive rower guys in here, competitive rugby players, national level rugby players. Um, general fitness people who just want to work out to look good naked like we fighters we, got. we have fighters we got everything that has come through those doors and found a place where it's not just for this one niche or it's not just for this or just for that there's not people looking around judging how they work out or or looking down on them or making fun of them because they don't lift heavy weight or anything like that it's just an environment where people can come train mm -hmm. hands down most rewarding thing ever and is that is that the norm I don't know. It should be. If, if you open your own gym, it damn well better be. Um, I don't think that's the norm for all the commercial gyms out there who just, you know, we sign up as million and many people as we can to make a lot of money and that's it. And maybe that's because I don't surround everything around money. And any member here can tell you that. It's just about trying to make a good environment for lifters. So I think that this makes me want to ask, what, what, is the origin story of Chalk It Up. Like, what was the original motivation for owning your own gym? Oh. Is that for episode two? No, we can <laughs> talk about it now. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how long we want this thing to go. The I'm condensed be, version. The condensed version, I wanted to open a gym for a while. Once I did the, like, lost a bunch of weight and started working out more. Yeah. Um, and, and coming from the far side of, like, like being the guy who just, like, like yeah. The hood goes on, yeah, you walk in the gym, Mars. you walk in the gym and you just treadmill and you don't look at anybody because you're worried and all that stuff. No, I went from that side. You're a lone wolf. Yeah, because you're you know, you're the only guy in there that matters. Yeah. I went from that and being super shy and then to like actual lifting and then people look up and ask you questions. And I did both sides. And so wanting to open a gym, I was like, man, that would be really cool to create an environment where, you know, people could feel comfortable. And then I think I said the typical thing at one point, like Oh, this is a gym? Oh, I could do this better. <laughs> like, I think every business owner does that. Like, yeah. they see whatever their business is. Like, yeah. oh, I, you know, I make t-shirts. Hey, I could do this better. I think everybody... It's a natural process. I think it, and, and it definitely is. And so doing that, and then, uh, and then I worked at a gym and learned how things work. And I didn't like how that was run because it seemed like it was only about money and numbers and about taking advantage of people. And I just, I couldn't... The way I was raised by my mom, I got morals, man. Mama. I got mama. Mama ain't raised no fool. Um, I got morals. And so I can't walk over those morals for a paycheck or for money. And so I wanted to open a place where it was less about that and more about just cultivating an environment where people could come and lift and have fun and say hi to each other and, you know, have that community of lifters, people athletes from everywhere that is just comfortable to lift. So then I just started chipping away at getting equipment and doing this and doing that and spent way too long trying to find a building and uh, Sonoma County, it's hard to find real estate in, as you know, and then found a place and then built it from the ground up and moved everything in and unlocked the doors and said, 
Come be a part of this if you want to be. The doors are open. So it, that was pretty much it. And, it. and it's almost like if you were to sacrifice your morals, like you would, you would have sort of satisfied the, that instant gratification early on. You would have been able to make a little more money early on. You would have been yeah. able to get a little more sleep. Maybe you'd be able to train more, but it's like you, you do it knowing that you had sacrificed these like values that you, you hold very deeply. Yeah, and, and I just I couldn't. And it's trusting like long term that even though right now it's, it's, it's difficult early on, like mm-hmm. long term you will you will have created this thing with with much more, I don't know, the word integrity than than other organizations. Yeah, definitely. And I think we've had several people come in here and be like, you know, I, I didn't want to go to the gym anymore when I went to the other gym or this or that. And then they come in here and they've trained for a few months and I'm like, like I'm excited to go to the gym after work. I'm excited to get in there and say hi to the people I see yeah. all the time. And like that community is like, you can't beat that. Yeah. Okay. That still gives me butterflies. Oh yeah. <laughs> for me too. So you, you alluded to it at first. You told you, We talked a little bit about one of the misconceptions in balancing being, being a gym owner and training for college as like you expect to be able to train all day. That was one of the misconceptions. Yes. Are there any others that stand out? Um, you don't drive a Mercedes. <laughs> None of that stuff happens when you open your own business. Um, it is hard to get the sleep and the eating and all that stuff dialed in and make a lot of gains just because you're, you're busy all the time. Um, other than that, I mean, that, that pretty much is like it. It's just those yeah. things right there are just make it a bit of a challenge but if you can work on overcoming those or train around those or find ways to work get great coaches who can cover the gym for an hour while you want to get food Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of stuff really really helps out and it's like in spite of these these sort of contextual factors weighing against you so like are like the things that contribute to good recovery sleep nutrition (laughs) nutrition stress outside of the gym like they're all they're all tanking your mrv yeah yet you had some amazing training cycles. Yeah. Because it's like you knew the base amount of work you had to do. You had that discipline built up over the course of however many years you trained beforehand. And like that powerlifting remained a priority and you were just like, screw it, just whatever, it's all gone. I just knew, you know, if I wasn't ready, it was going to be my fault. So I had to come in and get those compound movements done and these accessories done to make this better and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, it was a steady little like here. 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 pound jumps as we went and for like three or four meets there, it's going pretty solid. So, yeah, against all those odds, I still kind of progressed. Yeah. Could it have been faster with other things lined up? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. But just, you know, my life dictated that it wasn't going to be for, for those few months. Yeah, not everyone gets to sleep. No, like, there's one person out of Sonoma County who gets to sleep 12 hours a day, <laughs> who has their meals all prepped for them, who can train right at MRV and like, just ride that line of overtraining but not do it and that's that's not that isn't the exception to the rule and yeah. we should not expect that. not at all okay so in in this whole process in the two years you've owned the gym are there any changes you've made to the gym to accommodate like powerlifting or like uh, to to sort of suit powerlifting um like from the original vision to what it is now. Like what, okay, okay. What, so the vision was like, open the gym, get a bunch of powerlifters in here, and like big bellies and beards, and we're going to yeah, lift dude. all this weight. And, five finger and, death punch. and five finger death punch until your freaking ears bleed. Melanie and then, loves it now. Melanie loves it now. <laughs> and then the shift was to, how about we just focus on anyone who wants to get strong? Like, let's just focus on just strength training in general and go from there. And so the shift we've made, like probably number one thing, is just making an environment where anybody who wants to train for anything is comfortable. So we started out with like only powerlifting for the first few months, and then we realized this isn't a good idea. Let's kind of do anything that is strength training, just if you want a nice place to come and get strong and work hard, then now we have this place. So the only change I would say we made from like opening the doors now is just like, we want to focus on helping everybody with any kind of sport they want. Not just the most hardcore, angry powerlifters. Not just that. Okay. So that's those are some change, or that's the change the gym has made. Are there any changes you've made in your mindset in balancing owning a gym and training and being a powerlifter? I have accepted that I will lose some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mindset changes? No, man. I, I do everything the exact same as the first day I unlock the door. Um, 
come in every morning at way too early and uh, I still am just as happy unlocking the door as I am now. So I wouldn't say I made any changes, just, you know, shifted from the strength training to like rugby season in season training stuff and then shifted back to like more strength training stuff. But no mindset changes. I still feel the exact same as the day I unlocked the door. Okay, nice. And our last question. If you could sum this up in in one piece of advice, what is the most important piece of advice you would give to people in your shoes? Like people who are powerlifting with other stuff to do or people who want to open their own business? People who, let's say, want to open their own business are currently are like gym owners and they're balancing powerlifting. What is, is there like one standout piece of advice okay. that like really worked for you that you would like people in those shoes to know? First one, for people just trying to do their own thing, um, just do it. Just do it. It's scary as hell. And you've probably heard this a million different people, but like, you just gotta do it. Take the time to put everything in order that you need to put in order. Get your business plan, get this, get that. Find what you need, whatever your business may be, a restaurant, whatever it is, J just do it. It's not the end of the world if you fail. If you fail, it, it, it happens. You're probably still young, you probably got a lot of life left to live. It's okay. So for that aspect, I would say just try. Seek out people around you who can give you some good advice and, and do it. If I'm near you, come ask me. I'll give you advice. I don't care. I'll help you out. I'll tell you what not to do. Um, and then the other part of it being like a business owner and a powerlifter, understand there's going to be hard times and then just understand that you need to prioritize things. And then you need to be really honest with you and how you prioritize this. So you could come to this guy and be like, oh, hey, this is what's number one. It's gonna shine through eventually what's actually number one. Yeah. So you need to really, really understand that. For me, I know what's number one, and I know what's number two, three, and four, and five. And I would say make that checklist for yourself. If you're a gym owner and you're still doing powerlifting, I know there's a few of you guys out there, because some of you guys I know personally. Um, good for you, keep up the hard work, do the training the best you can, get as much sleep as you can, do all the things you need to be doing to make yourself better. And you know, the gym is probably, if you're a business owner, number one in your heart. So take care of that first and your training can come after that. But I would just say, you know, understand there's gonna be hard times and work really hard at it. It's gonna come, it all takes time. I'm still trying to understand that. I don't wanna accept it, but it's supposed to, everybody says it takes time. So here we are. Are there any concluding thoughts you'd like to mention before we wrap things up? Um. Concluding thoughts. Now you guys all know some stuff about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know how the gym is. Yeah, after 12 episodes of listening to you yeah, ramble. ramble on about pointless stuff. Yeah. Um, no, I think this is a good one. I'd like to do this with you as being a coach and an athlete. Mm -hmm. Some of the other people around the gym as, as trying to balance a lot of things. That camera's going to get turned around at one point and we're going to film that dude. <laughs> and he's going to explain how being a an athlete and a dad and having a job and doing a million things is so there's definitely some driving more driving and traveling everywhere driving everywhere so there's definitely some more interesting uh, episodes to come but i would say you know keep working hard at it keep doing what you guys are doing if you guys live local come on down and check us out mm -hmm. anything else well, that, that wraps things up that's it you can find me on instagram the great white rhino or here at chalk it up on a day-to-day -day basis Edward, where can they find you, sir? You can find me on Instagram at JRAlectan. You can find my writings online at PrometheusPowerlifting.com. And you can find me in the gym during the week. I'll be here. During the week, sometimes weekends, all the time. Yeah. Go check it out. We will see you guys on the next episode. Hopefully Cox will be here for that one. Mm -hmm. We are out.